Hello, good afternoon, welcome to the workshop. My name is Josh, this is my workshop and today we're gonna to talk to you about sandpaper. Are you excited? So let's start this off really simply by saying I use a heck of a lot of sandpaper, huge amounts of sandpaper. We do resin work, we do epoxy work, we do timber work, we're working with hardwood, softwoods, we do some, we do paint finishing. So we use anything and everything. And if you've seen any of my videos before, I always try and get a bit of a catch-all and I understand, you know, panaceas, they're the ones that aren't necessarily good at one specific thing and they're just like a jack of all, basically. I'm a jack of all and I'm happy to be a jack of all and I'm happy to use sanding paper as a jack of all. Now there's lots of sandpapers on the market and what I tend to use, I tend to use Merca sandpaper. Um, obviously, if you haven't seen, I use the Deeros, which is the Merca six inch random waterball sander. I think it's a, an amazing bit of kit. We've been using ours for years now, I don't know, five years, seven years, something like that, but it gets used for hours. And I do mean hours every day of the week, five days a week, for 52 weeks a year. We've absolutely abused it. And I know we've abused it because I've, don't tell Michelle, because it's her sander, but I've dropped it on the floor no end of times, and it still works, right? It's a beautiful bit of kit, hooked up to a proper uh, dust extractor. We use the Festool MIDI, but don't tell Merca. And it's great. It is, Merca sell it as dust-free sanding, and it is 99% of the time, it is dust-free sanding. And if it isn't dust-free sanding, that's probably because operator error, we haven't been using it correctly. So, like I said, we use Merca sandpaper. Now, the reason I use Merca sandpaper is because after the last 10, 11 years of being in business, using loads of different sandpapers, Merca always just tends to be the one that I go back to because it gives me the better finish, it gives me the better sanding capability, and it's better dust extraction. And hence, that's why I use them, okay? So Merca do a whole bunch of different sandpapers. We're gonna test three of them today, but I thought I would lay them out for you just so that you see. See, these are the ones that I have, okay? So we have a base cut. Base cut is like your general all-rounder, right? It's your general disc. It will do for anything and everything. It's cheap. You can get a box of 100 for them for maybe like 20, 25 quid. But it's not a specific disc for a specific purpose, okay? But again, at 20, 25 quid for a box of 100, if you use a couple discs here and there, it doesn't necessarily matter. It's not too much of an issue. And for anybody that's looking for a sanding disc and they say, hey, look, what would you recommend? Base cut's normally the one that I say go in and get because you know if cost is an issue if price is an issue and you want something that's going to be an all-rounder good catch-all good jack of all trades this is the one to go for then they do the iridium disc now I've only got a few of these and these are very nice specialized discs basically it's got like a slightly it's got a more aggressive cut it's faster it's better dust dust capability but it is quite expensive they do run for a box of 50 I think it's like 35 40 quid so not the cheapest but they are extremely good discs they used a lot in like the automotive industry so if they use them in automotive then you can guarantee that they're going to work well they're for plastics wood composites all those sorts of things metals then we look at the Abronet now everybody seen the Abronet um, I didn't realize until today that Abronet came out in the year 2000 did you know that I only heard about it maybe like six or seven years ago but yeah apparently it's been around since the year 2000 now now because of all the gaps in the material well yeah, you know what I mean, don't you? We've all seen it. Um, it gives you excellent dust collection. Obviously, when you work in an environment where dust can be an issue, especially with certain woods and materials that you don't want to be breathing it in, Abronet is a great thing to use. Now, I tend not to use Abronet a huge amount. There's not an issue with the disc. It's just what can happen is as you go over, maybe not necessarily an edge, but as you go over a corner, um, it can tear. For most people, that's not really going to be an issue. But because we do lots of laser cut stuff, CNC cut stuff, where we have lots of edges and intricate areas, there's a possibility that this is gonna catch and at the cost of the disc, it's just a bit of a no-brainer for us that we don't use it. However, when we're doing surface refinishing, so say for example, I'm refinishing a top or something like that, a bench top, not top, I think it's a great choice for you to use. And these are quite expensive, honestly quite expensive. They're probably one of the most expensive bar the Iridium. So these run at around about 40 pound for a box of 50. I tend to buy in boxes 100 and I will normally buy 80 grit, 120 grit, 180 grit and 320 grit. So if I want 400 discs, that's quite a lot of money on sandpaper you see. So I tell, like, again, like I said, I don't. it's not one that I normally buy, but I understand a lot of people use it and get on really well with it. So it's just not really fit for the purpose that we use it for. And you know me, it's always about having the right tool for the job, eh? And having a tool that can do all the jobs, jack of trade, yeah, don't listen to what I'm saying. So, Galaxy, right? Now, Galaxy's these, uh, these bright blue ones, and these are all on like these, um, 
It's sort of like a silicony type disc. It's a bit of a weird one to explain to you. So these are used in the automotive and marine environment. So when you talk about refinishing a hole for a gel coat, you're talking about doing a car respray, that sort of thing. That's what these really are meant for. Now I tend to use these quite a bit because they work really well with hard materials. So say for example, when I'm working on a canoe, or we're doing like a bit of table and we've got epoxy on there. These work really well. They're actually what you call self-sharpening. So the way that the grits and everything are set up, as a piece breaks off, then it will self-sharpen. And so the disc lasts so much longer. These run to about double the cost of these. So these run to about like 40, 50 pound for a box of 100. Just so we're clear, all of the prices will all change. Everything changes. You need to go find out where you can find them from. Go find a decent supplier. I've just picked a couple of suppliers that we can use on the internet and gone with their prices there. We use these a lot. They last a lot longer than the base cut. If I'm gonna do something that I know, as soon as I touch that paper on, it's gonna gum it up and wreck it, I use the base cut. If it's something that I'm not necessarily too fussed about, I use the base cut. If it's for fine finishing work, I have, up until this point, been using the Galaxy. And like I said, I do like a catch-all. Because this will work with hard and soft materials like wooden epoxy, this has kind of been the, the go-to that we use and because it's self-sharpening, like I said, lasts a lot longer. Now we come to the new one, right? The new one. I say new, it came out in October, but I don't think a huge amount of people have heard about it. This is called the Ligno or Ultimax Ligno. This is one of the few sanding discs that has been specifically designed for use with wood. Now, you can go and have a look, and I, I never knew about all of the different types of sandpaper and like aluminum oxide and ceramics and all of this sort of nonsense until I had to go buy sandpaper for uh, my sanders, like the big belt sander, for the dual drum sander, because we have to buy it on a big 100 meter roll. And obviously I wanted to get the right thing, so me being me, went down a few rabbit holes and, under, and found out a whole bunch of information about different types of sandpaper. This one is specifically made for wood. Now you might notice there's an hourglass design here on this sandpaper. What that is, is it means that there's less of a coating surface, but because it's being used mainly for wood, what it allows is all of those channels mean better dust extraction. It also means that you don't, you shouldn't get too much buildup of dust. And so I would imagine, I've not tried it on a painted surface, but we're gonna try on a painted surface today. I would imagine it would give you a better, better finish and you would probably get less buildup on the disc on a painted surface, but we're gonna find out. And because of the type of system, it's a it's like a more of a paper-based system. Apparently there's less tearing on it and it gives, again, gives you a longer life. Anything that means I can save a little bit of money, I am all for, because if anybody knows me, my arms are shorter than a Yorkshireman's, right? Really, that's it. There's the five that I've got here, the base cut, the Iridium, the Abronet, the Galaxy, and the Ligno. What we're gonna do is we're gonna Put all of this to the side. I'd throw it on the floor, like in a fit of passion type thing, but some of those discs cost two pound each. <laughs> I'm throwing nothing on the floor that costs two pound. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. I have a couple pieces of each. So we have an 80, a 120, an 80, 120, an 80, 120. What we're gonna, what, what we're gonna do is with the 80s, we're gonna do paint removal, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and remove the paint off of this hardwood face ply. We're gonna use the 80 grips on this and see how it gets on. We're gonna time it, see which gives the best finish, which gives, oh, that was the other thing. Apparently you get less swirls with this Ligno, which is mega important when we're staining or we're oiling. What we're gonna do with the Ligno is we're gonna try this on a piece of oak, right? Oh, I'm short with the auctionman, I'm trying things on a piece of oak. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this on 120, on the oak, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll see how the eight gets on after it's been painted. We're going to do split it into sections. We're going to try the one twenty, get it to where I'm happy with the finish, and then we're going to oil it. So this is less about the amount of time that it takes, more about the finish that we're going to get from it. If anybody knows, you know when you get all your swirl marks on there, get the oil on there, get your stain on there, and um, all you're going to see is the swirl marks. And it being a piece of paper, I really don't want anything like that happening. So what we're going to do, like I said, split it up, give it sand. Give it an oil and see how it looks. All right, you happy? If you do have any questions about anything that I've said, because I tend to just like rattle everything off and people get a little bit upset in the comments of how quickly I talk, all of the information, all the links will be in the description. So you can go in there, have a look, look at your leisure. I've got like the Ultimax Ligno uh, information sheet from Merca. It talks about, um, it's an all new, an all new Merca abrasive for woodworking, combining a fast cut with long life thanks to especially good resistance to clogging when sanding strubs, substrates. And that's it, and it talks about no blanket of dust, talks about different um, enhanced edgeware, and it goes through it. There's, I don't know if there's these on the website, but there are lots of information that you can find about all of the different discs. And like I said, 
I use Merca because Merca is the one I tend to go back to time after time after time. They just tend to hit that price point, the quality level, and the ease of use. All right, so that's what we're gonna try out today. Okay, cool, so the test is gonna be super simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sand this side, sand this side, strip the paint off, stick it to the other side of the line, and then sand the center off. We're gonna use three different types, so we'll do like do the base cut, the abernet, and then the ligno. What I'll do is I'll speed it up as I'm sanding. I'm gonna sand until I'm got, I've got the finish back that I would be happy with for me to be able to recoat it with something else. And I'll speed up in the video, and yeah, we'll go from there and we'll see which one cuts the best, gives the nicest finish, and does the quickest, all right? Okay, so there we go, there is the base cut. Man, that's nice. As you can see, this is hardwood base ply, so we started to come through the top frame, well, the top veneer, not too worried about that. I'm quite impressed with that, really, to be honest with you. This is, I think this is four coats of like a latex based exterior grey paint, satin, this is into all coat, and I've run that on full, which you shouldn't really do if, you, if you're trying to sand off paint. Obviously, this has cured quite nicely now, because it's about a week, week or two old. There's no bobbling. It hasn't, we've got no bits of paint stuck to the disc or anything like that, which I think is like really bang on for a cheapo, well, a cheapo disc. So what we'll do now then, is we will try the Abernet. Okay, so again, these are all brand new discs. So let's get at it and see how we do. There we go, look, that has turned out beautifully. A lot quicker than the old base cut, that's for sure. But it's worth remembering, obviously these discs are a lot more expensive than these ones. Right, here's the Ligno. Let's give this a go and see if it is as fast as the Abernet or if it takes the same amount of time as the uh, base cut. And there we go, that is the Lignite, ladies and gents. I'm, um, I'm very impressed with that. Because again, we haven't had any, any delamination, we haven't had any bits tearing away, there's no tear marks on it, it's not pulled itself over, and we don't have any paint stuck to it. So yeah, I'm um, really pleased with that. And you can see, interestingly, you can see how it pulls the dirt in from the outside holes, well, pulls the dust in from the outside holes. That's interesting. I think my... Uh, my poor old marker might need replacing at some point soon. I uh, hear they've got some new ones on the go, eh? That might be interesting to have a look at, but yeah. What do you think to that then, right? So, we've got Abernet, Ligno, and Base Cut. Now, they've all worked. They've all removed the paint. <laughs> they've all removed the top face of the veneer as well at that. I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. It does go to show that, you know, if you can only afford the base cut, then the base cut's gonna work for you, in this instance, anyway. We use this paint a lot, this interval coat. It works great for, like, exhibition work when you're doing outdoor stuff, all that sort of thing. It's hard wearing, it's, it's washable. So it is quite a difficult paint to remove once it's cured. And yeah, and all three of these have worked perfectly well. So now what we're gonna do is now we're gonna have a go with the oak, and that's, that's the one I'm really interested in, if I'm honest with you. Because anything, really, you can get a belt sander and just rip a load of paint off, can't you? But the fine finish work, that's ultimately why we have the Deer Ross. We have Deer Ross because it's a fine, good quality finish sander. Cool, let's have a look then. Great, great. So now we've got that taped off. It's worth bearing in mind that this is real timber, it's real oak, so there's going to be different sections. This has a knot in it, so that's going to take longer to stand. This has got stain on, so is this, this hasn't. You know, and it's not completely flat, it's not been through the planer, so this, we're asking a lot of the sandpaper, really, to be fair. But I think this gives us a, a good real world opportunity to try and see which one's gonna work, whether they come out with swells, you know, which gives us the best finish. Do we think that the Abernet is worth more than the Ligno? Do we think the Ligno is better than the base coat? All that sort of stuff. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna oil it and just see how pretty it looks, all right? So as before, we will start with the base coat. Right, give me two seconds. I'll get the gloves on, I'll get the oil out, and we'll get a rag and we'll, um, we'll give it a go. You ready? Ready? One, two, go. 
Good. Okay, cool. So today what we're going to use is we're going to use Valtine's Danish oil. Cheap, cheerful, and I really like the way that it looks on oat. Valtine's is great. I use the garnish. I've got their hard wax oil, their UV oil. You don't have to order from a specialist supplier like the tree text that I use. This you can normally get from Tool Station. Always it support your independent tool, uh, tool supplier, but yeah, everybody has a tool station within a bit of driving distance. So what we'll do is we'll pour that into a tub. Right, and then I've got a cotton, bit of a cotton t-shirt. What we're going to do is we're just going to do each section, just see what it comes up like, see how pretty it is. Strip everything back at the end and then we'll have a look. Alright? How nice is this? Now, so what I've done is I've taken a few close-ups with macro lens on my phone just to show you how it looks at like the super fine level. Now, to the eye, to the naked eye, you know, it's so difficult. I can see maybe some real fine swirl marks just in here. It's mostly on, on each piece, there are some super fine swirl marks on the harder bit of the cinema, where the knots are, where the grain is, um, which I kind of expect you know, we've only gone to 120, normally I'd probably bump it up to about 180 if I'm going to put Danish oil on, but these are the grits that I had in all the sandpaper, so I thought it'd be, we'd do a fair and even test. In terms of the base cut, I think for a standard, finished, cheap disc, I think this is beautiful. You know, it's come out really, really nice. There are swirls if you get down close. I mean, at like two foot away, you're not going to see anything. In there. six foot, you're never going to see anything. In terms of the abronet, I can see some swirls, not as pronounced as on the base cut, but they are there. But again, you have to get super close and it's only really in the harder sections of wood. So that could be down to operator error, if I'm honest. That is a really good finish. And then in terms of the ligno, and to be fair to the ligno, we've given it the hardest piece of wood. We've given it the center with the knot in there with all of this additional hardness. On the softer stuff, I cannot see a single swirl mark. Maybe if I get super duper close, what they tend to be is, I think I can see some swirl marks, but what they tend to be is they tend to be a lot finer than the other two. On the, on the actual knot, there's none. In and around the knot, there may be some, yeah, just a few tiny ones. But again, we've only sanded to 120. I would normally take this up to 150 and then 180 if I was gonna do something like this for a client. If we go back to the two foot test on either of these, there's no difference at all. If we go back to the six foot test, I mean, they're bang on perfect. So what does that mean then, hey? What does that mean for us all? Well, like I said, these are 20 pound a box for 100. These are 40 pound a box for 100. And then for 100, you're probably looking at, where's my notes? 40 pound for 50. So 20 pound, 40 pound, 80 pound. So these are double the cost of these and quadruple the cost of these. Do you get four times a better finish? In my opinion, no. However, these are gonna last a lot longer than these will. I think these, this Ligno is really the best mid-game sanding disc that I've seen, or that I've at least tested it out of these three discs. You know, we've gone for cheap, mid-range, and expensive. This one hits all the points. I believe, I don't know, but I believe it was quicker on the, um, on the paintwork. It gave a nicer finish really on the removal of the paint. And interestingly, this has given a lot smoother finish than the other two, which says to me that the, the grit on this disc, and if I'm wrong, well, why would you tell me, but the grit on this disc has started to smooth itself off, which is why we've got a nice smoother finish. And this has got a bit of a rougher finish and a rougher finish here. With these, I think I'm very impressed with how well it's come out. I'll put those little macro ridges online for you to have a look. I'm super pleased with that. 
I'm really impressed with all of those to be honest with you. I think if I was a hobbyist and I didn't have a huge amount of money to put out there, I think the base cut is a good enough option. It removed the paint, you know, it smoothed, smoothed the rough sword over down beautifully and that was 120 grit to the point where that is more than good enough really for a chopping board or for a sideboard or that sort of thing. The Abernet is nice. For us, it's not necessarily the best disc. It is expensive and it can catch when you go over a corner, which for, like I said, when we're doing CNC routing, when we're doing laser cut stuff, all of those additional edges can be a problem. Whereas the Ligno doesn't seem to tear. It has torn, don't get me wrong, it has torn, but it doesn't tear anywhere near as much as the Abronet or the base cut. It's not a huge amount more expensive, really, when you're looking at boxes 100, and I buy boxes 100. It's faster, right, and it gives it an impeccable finish. And so, from my point of view, which is a production grade, like sort of smashing out a thousand units or something, the Ligno would be the best option. I'm super pleased with that. I do like the Abernet, but it's so expensive. And once it's torn, they're no good. You know, the base cut can tear and you can sort of cut a little bit off and crack on with it. And I have no issue with these. I use these a huge amount, but they're just throw away. You know, you use it a couple of times and you're like, yeah, it's got no disc on it, or it's got no grit on it, chuck it. Whereas these, I get a huge amount of use out of these, just like I do the Galaxy, but I think I'm gonna start moving over to these Ligno, the Ultimax Ligno. That's a weird thing, isn't it? Ligno. Lig. Like a lemon lollipop. Why do they call it Ligno? I should have a look. Is it on the disc? Is it on the sheet? What does it say? It doesn't, but they do have a QR code, so if you would like to learn more about Ligno, I will hold that up, and then you can just scan that QR code, and uh, yeah, look, more about Ultimax Ligno. And this is the tech sheet that I got. I think I nabbed this off of the Mercurette. And if anybody's wondering, this isn't sponsored, Merca haven't sponsored me, they don't like, but yeah, nobody sponsors like Baratine, I just use Baratine because it's a good oil. I use Merca because I think they're the best discs that I can find. I use the Merca Deros because I genuinely believe it's the best sander out there. I have the Festool Mini because it was the first extractor I bought. <laughs> so, I mean, that's why I use it. I have some other Festool stuff, I don't have a problem with Festool. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll see that I've got Parkside and I use Lumberjack. And I think, I think one of the things that I like about Merca is they actually put the effort in. They care about their customers, they care about their product, and that's one of the things that I genuinely enjoy. There's a, there's a few companies that I really like. I like Lumberjack, I think they're the same. I think they put a lot of time and effort into their products and they genuinely want to help the customer and listen to them. Same thing with Axminster. I've heard people have had bad experiences with Lumberjack, Axminster. Axminster have always been bang on. If you have a look around my workshop, I have Axminster tools, I have Lumberback, Lumberjack tools. Another company is Felder. I think Felder do some amazing. For me, they are like the creme de la creme. They are the, that is what you aspire to buy is the Felder units. And then yeah, and Merca, I think it, they are, they really set the bar as far as I'm concerned in terms of like the sanders and their abrasives. And the fact that these have been out since 2000 just blows my mind. What do you think? Would you have done anything different? Did you think I screwed anything up? Would you have liked to see any, uh, uh, any of the other discs? Do you think there was anything wrong with my testing? What do you think, right? Because this is a two-way street, ladies and gents, two-way street, and I want to hear your information back, or I want to hear your feedback back, because your feedback then helps me to be able to create better videos, better content, and um, some more enjoyable work. So yeah, I hope you've had a great day. I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you, if you did enjoy it, please feel free to subscribe. That'd be great if you could like it and share it. That would really help out as well, and uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. You have a great day. Take it easy. And I shall see you on the next video, all right?